Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another YouTube video on my YouTube channel. If you don't recognize, I have been trying to record this for the past 30 minutes, so if I sound like I am getting irritated, then it's because I probably am. And I have been messing up on the end show since. So hopefully, this will be the final um, video, I guess, that I will hopefully will be recording. What I'm going to go over today, for the fifth time I've been saying this, I'll be going over my personality type. Um, I took a test on a website called 16 Personalities, where it's basically you answer a whole bunch of questions and when you're back you get your personality type. My personality type is a INFP-A or an INFP-T. I forgot what they both mean, but I'm basically going to go over the introductions. I want to quickly read out the introductions real quick. And I want to go over what I think of my opinions on. So, on the outside, mediators, meditators, mediators, I don't know how to pronounce that, may seem quiet or even shy, but they often have a vibrant passion in their lives. Because they make up such a small portion of the population, people with this personality type may sometimes feel misunderstood or out of step with the world. Fortunately, their current nature can help them create and sustain deep relationships with their loved ones. Medi meditators? Meteors? Not meteors. I'm driving crazy over this. Value authentic authenticity, empathy, and harmony. That, I can say, is true. These personalities tend to act with their best intentions and they often, and they are rightly proud of this trait. That said, they may feel isolated or discouraged when other people don't share their idealism. Uh, all that is gold does not glitter, and all that is who wonders are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From a quote from J.R.R. Tolkien. Speaking of their truths, many mediators. Oh my lord. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. I, it's been a long day. Meteors, meditators, are you pronounced there, are curious about the depths of human nature. They often make an effort on understanding other people's true feelings. This can make them make them capable of great empathy. As an empath, I 100% agree. This can make them capable of great empathy. It can enable them to communicate in the ways of the sensitivity original and quite moving. Perhaps become of these strengths, meditators, meteors, meditators, tend to crave opportunities from, from creative self-expression. It comes as no surprise as that many famous meditators, you know what, I'm gonna do myself a favor. And Google it. How the heck do you pronounce Mediator? Mediator? Is that how you pronounce me? Again, long day. They're pronounced mediator. Mediator. Okay, well we've got that out of the way. Maybe we go back to the page. Mediator. Mediator. Like meditator. Not really. Okay, mediators are often poets, writers, and actors. Funny thing is, when I was younger, I did write a lot of poem, and as of right now, I am acting and I am writing, so that's a plus, I guess. People with the personality types are often dreaming of all sorts of stories and possibilities, and as a very vivid daydreamer and a regular dreamer, this is like, this cannot be closer to the truth, and it is the most, best, most creativity thing that I can think of of actually doing. Um, medi mediators have talent of self-expression. They may reveal their innermost thoughts and secrets through mediators, through metaphors, and fictional characters. I love watching, or when I was younger, I used to watch a lot, or read a lot of fantasy books, a lot of, um, thinking of like Lord of the Rings, or a lot of, lots of creativity films, which are probably one of my favorite books and movies to talk about. Um, especially when I was reading a lot of, uh, I didn't really get to watch um, or read a lot of the Harry Potter books, but I read a lot, I read all of the Percy Jackson books, there's only like five or six books, and something like that has lots of fantasy, lots of adventuring, and a lot of storytelling, which is something that I really love doing. Continuing with the path, by using their imaginations in their way, mediators can explore their inner nature and their place in the world. That said, they can have the tendency to daydream a lot and fantasize rather than take action. If they don't act on their dreams and ideas, mediators are likely to end up feeling frustrated and unf unfulfilled. This is true, I am hoping to a certain extent, there have been a lots of things that I've been thinking of doing and lots of ideas that I, I play out in my head, like it's a 
full separate story. And then when it comes to actually doing it, it's kind of hard because most of the dreams that I kind of I dream of kind of are they feel far fetched and they feel kind of out of my reach. But at the same time, I, I need to make a step sooner or later. But um, in search of calling, mediators feel directionless or stuck, like I said, unless they connect with a sense of purpose for their lives. It's kind of hard to do something if you don't think it has a purpose in your life. Um, I'm kind of the kind of person who, if I don't find a reason to do something, I'm more likely not going to do it. I need something behind the reasoning in order to do it, unless it's some crazy random reason that I thought of. Um, it's hard to just do things without an intent of why you're doing it to begin with. Um, they connect with a sense of purpose for lives. For many medi mediators, this purpose has something to do with their helping and uplifting others. Empathetic by nature, these personalities may feel other people's suffering as if with their own. This only strengthens their motivation to be a service. I know a lot of people were saying that um, INFJs, I'm kind of a hard time remembering that. Um, a lot of people were saying that we should um, start talking to more people. I've been debating on um, when I was younger, at least when I was in high school or middle school, I was planning on becoming a kind of like a tutor or a kind of someone who to talk to. Um, but at the time I was going through my own mental problems. And at the same time, I don't think that would be a really good idea to try to help other people's mental problems while I have my own personal mental problems. But yeah, I would definitely kind of agree on that. Uh, continuing with the passage, uh, all the mediators might want to, am I pronouncing that wrong again? Mediators, I might want to help everyone. They mainly focus on their attention and energy on one worthy cause at a time. Otherwise, they can become so overwhelmed by all the problems they can't fix that they're tempted to give up or even trying. This is a sad sight for mediators, friends who often depend on their hopeful outlook. Fortunately, like flowers in the spring, mediators' creativity and idealism can bloom even after the darkest of seasons. Although they know the world will never be perfect, mediators will care about, yeah, speak, care about making it better however they can. This quiet belief in doing the right thing may explain why these personalities are often inspire compassion, kindness, and beauty wherever they go. The next passage is strength and weakness. I might talk over that in the next video or um, later in this video. But to round basically what I said, um, I don't have a full disagree on not yet, at least. Um, I might change my mind when I go over the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make this video with two parts or um, just put all of these in one video. Um, I'll probably depend on depending on how long this video is going to be and how long this video is going to upload. Um, I might make this into a two or even the three part, depending on how long this um, this passage is. So um, yeah, I will focus on that later. But um, I forgot what I was going to say, so I guess we can continue going back on the strengths and the weakness of a um, INFP um, or an IFFP T or an A. So, strengths and weaknesses. Mediators are thoughtful. I don't know if I'm going to go over... Okay, there are, there's only a couple of times. Okay, so thoughtful. Mediators care about other people's feelings. They adjust their actions and if they think they might hurt anyone, even unintentionally, kind of hard it flows from mediators. Personality and everyone around them tends to benefit from it. So I have a bad habit of doing something similar to this. Um, I'm either afraid of calling somebody or I feel like I'm bothering them. If I ask favors, I feel like I'm bothering them and I feel like they're I'm taking them out of their lives and kind of being selfish it feels like sometimes i know this is why it's hard for people like me to get help because either one i try to hide the fact that i need help so i don't want to actually have to want to bother people but at the same time everyone needs help this life is way too difficult for just to go through it by yourself so things like that i'm definitely working on but i kind of agree and it's not even hard to like walk up to someone and say hey can you do something for me or can you help me with something um, it takes a lot of courage to do that, especially if it's someone I know, it's even harder because, I don't know, it feels like I don't want to break the relationship that we have, even if we're friends or if we're dating or if you're like um, my family or just anything like that. So usually I try not to ask for as many help, but I'm getting better at that. Generous mediators really enjoy succeeding at others' expensive. In general, people with personality types want to share the good things in their lives. They value equality and they want to ensure that every voice has a perspective is heard. What's the point of enjoying something if it's not shared doing with other people? 
that is kind of the, my whole gist of things like that, and it's kind of my opinion and things like that. I find most enjoyment in doing it with others because I am not only sharing a moment by myself, but I'm also sharing a moment with someone else, and we have a similar moment. We might have two different perspectives of whatever we're both enjoying. If something amazing happened and I, you know, go do something amazing, I would like to share it with somebody, regardless if it's, if it's the person that I'm dating or if it's a family or a friend, cousin, doesn't matter. And I think that's the whole gist of life because things are, most of the things that we enjoy are materialistic. And if we start enjoying things like, oh, like, I don't know, a walk on a park, something that's not so materialistic, I think it's important to actually cherish that memory instead of cherishing, not, there's nothing wrong with cherishing an item, but at the same time, it's like, I'd rather cherish the memory of what happened instead of an actual item. But that's just my own opinion. Um, I'm gonna go through, go through these a bit quickly because um, I think there's a bit more, actually. Okay, there's a bit more. I'm gonna go through these a bit quickly. So, um, next one is open-minded. Minotaurs, me, I forgot how to pronounce it again. Minot yeah, I can't even speak. Okay, I'm going back to... Mediator. Mediator, okay. And I am... Okay. Open-minded. Mediators seem to give other people the benefits of the doubt. They aim to be tolerant in other people's beliefs, lifestyles, and decisions. Generally speaking, mediators support others' rights to live as they see fit, as long as no one is being hurt. I a bit agree on that. I, I tend to help others. I tend to focus on other people, regardless of trying to focus on my own problems and situations, because it does feel good. It's like the hit of dopamine that you like that every time you help someone and you kind of make their day go a bit by better, it feels good, it does. And it kind of makes, feels like it makes my life a bit better. Um, so yeah, creative mediators often find seeing things unconventional perspectives with their ability to make surprising and unexpected connections. It's no wonder that many mediators are drawn to the creative pursuits and the arts. Passionate, when an idea or a movement captures mediators, imaginations, and speaks to their beliefs, they can give their whole heart to it. People with these personality types can be reserved or reticent, but that doesn't diminish their strong feelings for the cause that matches their ideas. And the last section, last section loyal to their values. Doing what right thing isn't always easy, but medi mediators, far-reaching visions can help them stay at the course. When they're doing something meaningful, these personalities can have a sense of purpose or even careers that keeps them true to their values. And those are the strengths of a mediator. Now, here are the weaknesses. I am scared to go over these, but with strengths comes weaknesses. So this is what I have to do. So, over-idealistic. Mediators can take their idealism too far. People with these personality types might idolize their romantic partner or expect, or expect every aspect of their job to feel meaningful. This can set, up, this can set them up to, for disappointment when reality falls short of their dreams. Now, the thing that sucks is reality and my dreams are obviously not the same thing. And let's be honest, reality isn't the best, like, especially with now everything that's been going on. It's kind of like you want to get farther and farther away from reality and you want to go back to your dreams and go back to um, just being in a safe haven. And I don't know, it can be difficult trying to go back and forth. Um, but yeah, I could see this 100% true. Um, but yeah, self-critical. Oh God, this, I already know what this is going to be about. Mediators can expect so much for, from themselves that they in, inevitably, inevitably fall short. When this happens, they may accuse themselves of being selfish or willfully inadequate. This self-criticism can erode their motivations to get things done and their willingness to prioritize necessary self-care. I did this a lot in high school, a lot in middle school. Um, I get jealous a lot and I get jealous very easily, but over the years I've kind of um, used that jealousy to make myself a better person. When I see a person like a YouTuber called Dan TDM, if you don't know him, he is another, I can't say Minecraft YouTuber, he doesn't play Minecraft as much, but he plays lots of video games. And if you see his life, he was with his parents at one time, he moved into his house, and now he has his own huge mansion, I think it's a mansion, 
and I saw him and I was really jealous of him. Now I have a habit of, the type of people I get jealous at, if they're older than me, I really don't get too jealous because they're obviously older than me and they've had more time to get where they are. Um, and I kind of use that jealousy to make myself a better person. It's like, hey, that person has this, I want it. And I, I even work harder now because um, this, well, it just makes me a better person. Uh, the people that I am that are closest to my age, especially the people in my school year, or who are all 2,000 kids, um, I get jealous of them more if they're closer to my age, if they have more, they, it seems like they have more of me, but I tend to try to stay away from that, especially on social media, since I follow a lot of my um, school friends from elementary, either from elementary school or for the days we graduated in 2018, and I try to take my best to stay away from them, but I try to think of the things that I have and the things that um, I have that they don't possibly. And yeah, it's kind of hard, but yeah, I, you, you get a lot of critical thinking from yourself, uh, which is kind of funny, but um, it's something else. Uh, impractical. When something's, yeah, when something's captures mediators' imaginations, mediators' imaginations, they can become so consumed by it that they, they yeah, I can't even speak. They neglect practical matters. Some people with their personality types even neglect eating or sleeping as they pursue their passion. Other mediators can often in in armored with an idea that they're afraid to act on it because they might not do it perfectly. I did a it was terrible. When I back in home when I was in Georgia, I used to play games twenty four seven, and my playing video games, recording video games, and streaming video games was a huge. It felt like a passion to mine. Especially when I was in middle school and I first started getting my own computer, I started making some money and I started getting my own desktop and I have my own gaming setup. I loved recording videos and this is why I'm doing it now. I absolutely love recording videos and I love playing video games and um, not only I love playing videos, I like playing videos with other people. It makes things so much more enjoyable and I would not eat for at least two days. I would probably go downstairs, eat a bag of chips, and not come back for the next day. Um, it has a bad habit, um, but I'm slowly getting better. I'm, I'm cooking now, um, and I'm not playing as much video games because I don't have a full gaming setup. I legit have my, you guys can't see it, but I legit have my Xbox and my computer screen um, sitting on the ground. That's gonna mess up my, I have it right there. Right where my suitcase is at. And, oh. Yeah. So, um, again, I don't play as much because I obviously sold my gaming PC. Um, and all I have is my Xbox that's on the floor, and I really own that. But, yeah, it's just like... Um, you get so focused on the things that you want to do that you kind of forget um, all of the kind of important things, like feeding and bathing, and like simply... Just taking care of yourself, just in general. Um, but yeah, continuing on, conflict adverse. Mediators, that's it. I legit keep on forgetting how to pronounce this. Mediator. Mediators, Jesus Christ. Mediators can become so focused, I already read that. Oh, no I didn't. Emotionally driven, mediators can become so focused on their emotions that they lose track of what's really going on. It can be a challenge for those personalities to slow down and make sure that their feelings aren't preventing them from clearly seeing the fact of a situation. Conflict reverse. Mediators generally prefer to avoid conflict. They can, be, they can put a great deal of time and energy into trying to please everyone, which is very true. This desire to please others can drown out their own inner wisdoms and make them painfully sensitive to even constructive criticism. Difficult to get to know, which is, I can see that kind of happening. Um, mediators um, are private, reserved, and sometimes self-conscious. This can make them self-conscious, yeah. This can make them somewhat difficult to really get to know. Their needs for personal space can contribute to the guilt they feel for not giving more to themselves what those they care about. For me personally, I kind of disagree. I'm an open book most of the time. Uh, when I'm meeting some people, I usually tell them as much stuff as about me, but at the same time I try to keep it secret because I don't know what they suspect of me. I'm not sure if they even like me to begin with. Um, but yeah, it's something that I've been dealing with a lot. 
uh, what I've been doing a lot. But once you get to know me, I'm I legit don't like keeping too many secrets by myself unless it's a secret from a friend, and I will 100% keep the secret. But when it comes to like my personal things, I I'm not afraid to say anything really. Um, especially if I know you, then yeah, like I'm pretty open book, in my opinion. Um, the next section is, so we have other sections. I don't know if I'm gonna go over every single one of them. This video is gonna be, is getting very long, so I'm probably gonna end the video here. But there are other um, things as we have romantic relationships, friendships, parenthood, career paths, workplace habit, and conclusion. I will probably go over the rest of those tomorrow. I say tomorrow. For you guys, maybe in a couple of days or next week. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm probably gonna end the video here. Yeah, okay, so I'm probably gonna end the video here. Sorry if this video is a bit longer than my usual videos. I don't know if this video is gonna be split up to two two minute videos. Um, I might do that, um, depending on how patient I am um, when it comes to editing this video. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. If you guys are more interested about these, then I'm probably gonna do a bit more personality, um, personality top tens maybe, or top fives. Um, I've been trying to figure out what kind of YouTube videos I kind of want to make. Since I obviously can't do gaming videos yet, I'm probably just going to stick to these one-on-one, -on -one, um, face-to-face -face kind of videos. So, um, things are definitely going to be, you know, spicing up a bit more. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. If you want, feel free to subscribe or comment or even share this YouTube channel or video so more people can, um, see me, I guess. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys hopefully in a couple of days or next week for a new video on my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.